from Los Angeles, California. It's the Club Zero podcast with your host Josh Ahrens. Now put your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. If you didn't know, now you know. It's time to start the show. This is the Club Zero podcast, and I am so echoey in my headphones that this is not gonna work. Okay, problem solved. Welcome to the show. This is the Club Zero podcast, and I am your host, Josh Ahrens. You know, it occurred to me that in three episodes, I never once said my name. But nonetheless, I'm Josh Ahrens, and I'm the host of the Club Zero Podcast. Woo! Oh, how's everyone doing? This is this is oh, fuck. that's better. Oh well, we're in like week a zillion of quarantine, and oh, I need to make some money, dude. You know, I I live in SoCal which sounds really lame when I say the phrase SoCal, so let me rephrase that. I live in the Los Angeles area in beautiful Southern California, so the weather's really nice, but we can't do anything. So it kind of feels like it feels like when you're a kid and you get grounded in the summertime. It's like, yeah, you don't have to go to school, but yeah. Finding ways to keep busy, obviously. Um been making these things which by the way our subscribers on youtube have doubled in the last week that's right we are up to two subscribers so what do you think about that mom uh, should i do some topical shit well this did actually interest me um president trump i guess suggested that maybe we could um inject some kind of disinfectant into people that would kill the virus like i like where his head's at like a lot of people are giving him crap but like at least he's he's trying to come up with something but unfortunately though i know that that doesn't work because i had an ex-girlfriend who tried to inject herself with disinfectant to get rid of you know a foreign body that she didn't want inside of her and yeah long story short I owe a lot of child support, so just, I like where your head's at, but it's just, wow, that was bad. Anyways, my guest today is Miss Annie Newton, and if you don't know who she is, I think that within a relatively short amount of time, you are going to know who she is, well, obviously, because you're going to watch this, stupid, but I believe that she could be America's next sweetheart. She is a working actress, and... We talked a lot about the art of acting. Art? Sorry, I didn't mean to. And what the industry is really like. And it was really fascinating because there are a lot of people who want to fancy themselves actors. I mean, like, I fancy myself a comedian and an entertainer. And we all see how that's going. But she is actually in the business, actually working her way up. So it was really interesting to talk with her and, you know get a little bit of insight on the biz so let's get on with the show oh there we go hey hey okay cool welcome back (laughs) all right good quality stuff thanks for doing this (laughs) this is what's keeping me sane during the quarantine is just random projects and stuff and I don't know if it's because of the quarantine or because I have good friends, but people are going along with it. So thank you. Awesome. What have you been doing to keep sane during the Corona times? Oh man. Um, I've been doing, I'm in a weird situation because I, um, when the quarantine was called, I actually moved down to where I work. So I moved on to the farm where I work. So I essentially went from like, a 500 square foot studio apartment to a house. <laughs> and so I'm here like still working, but I'm not working as much. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. Um, so I've been working with the horses cause I'm a horse trainer. <laughs> that, 
I actually want to talk about that because okay. from from an outside perspective, I just see on your Instagram and stuff. I mean, your life almost looks like a Disney movie. There's a, <laughs> there's a different animal in your every one of your posts. I'm like, I, I swear she probably talks to these things. No, I'm like, <laughs> it really is like I am like Snow White. Like we honestly, we have a dog. We have two dogs actually that come visit us like every day. Uh, yeah, I have several horses on the property, a donkey, um, and my boyfriend <laughs> who I live with is such a good sport. I'm not kidding. I think it was maybe three years ago. I brought home a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not, so I was, I was putting my horse away one day and I kept hearing this chirping and I thought it was a bird. And even my horse was like looking into the rafters of the barn and I opened up the stall door and a cat ran out and I was like, yeah, oh shit, what did you kill now? You know, what are you playing with now? And I look in the corner and it was a little baby ground squirrel. Oh my goodness. And I just like, you know, the snow white in me didn't even think. I just like scooped him up and I was like, I'll save you. you know? <laughs> I'm, like, walking to the sink with Benadine scrub ready to like fix this cut up squirrel. And I'm like, what am I doing? Now I have a squirrel. <laughs> So I re we rehabilitated the squirrel for like, I think we had him for two and a half months. And then we released him back out into, you know, where he came from. But yeah, we lived with a squirrel for two and a half months. <laughs> and it was an experience. <laughs> wow. That's, yeah. Like I said, that's like out of a Disney movie. Yeah, I know. I, you know. We can't just leave I'm, the squirrel. <laughs> I can't leave the squirrel. I have to save the squirrel. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's uh, it's quite the life. <laughs> I, I uh, like to imagine that your boyfriend is like not really cool with animals. And he's always got like one running in his hair like, these darn animals. <laughs> no, you know what's really funny is I always make fun of him because like, like no matter what I say or do or like whatever, like whatever illness I think I have or whatever is happening in my life, he's always, he's like been there, done that. <laughs> he's always like a couple years ahead of me. So I kid you not, I have the squirrel next to me in the car and I'm on my way home and I'm like, Steve, I'm coming home. I have a baby squirrel with me. And he's like, Annie, no, we did this growing up with a couple squirrels and like they didn't make it. <laughs> went on this whole thing and I was like oh okay so this isn't like a new thing to you okay <laughs> and of course they bring the squirrel home and he's mad for like two minutes and then they're like best friends <laughs> so funny I, I'll have to send you a video that he made of him like drinking beer on a Saturday and the squirrel that he named nuts is sitting next to him like <laughs> eating some spinach <laughs> it's like Saturday for the boys right nuts <laughs> That's all right. awesome. I guess that's the best reaction to have. Like, if you're going to bring a squirrel home, he's like, oh, all right, I guess. <laughs> yeah, just like submits to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great. Oh, man. So, oh, yeah. What else do I got here? Yeah, quarantine, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's rough. Yeah, that. <laughs> Imagine, um, I mean, not a lot of acting stuff going on right now, huh? But yeah, no, no. My uh, my old manager, who he just like can't stop working. He's like sick too. Like he he just uh, finished chemo. He's in his seventies and he's like sitting at home in his apartment, just like he's still like. So I might have something for you. I'm like Marv. It's. <laughs> <laughs> we're quarantined like don't worry about it it's fine <laughs> but he just like doesn't know how to occupy his time so he's been sending me a few scripts but you know they're like bad made for tv lifetime movies you know where i get 10 pages in and i'm like yeah I, okay <laughs> 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 i get it <laughs> so being um a working actress it's probably different than what a lot of people think they know of as an actor or an actress uh, what are some have you had any taken any roles like you don't have to say any specifics where you're like oh gosh oh man I have had I have like 
I have been through the mill. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's, I've had a very interesting time in this industry and it's so like, you know, I went from, I, first of all, I'm like an agent and manager's worst nightmare because I say no to almost everything. <laughs> like, and especially the older I get and the more I value my time and like, the work that I do and the energy I put into it, the more I'm just like, I'm not, I'm not doing this shit. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> and, so, and like my, <clears throat> I keep saying my old manager because I technically like let him go, but he just like hasn't stopped working for me. So <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of, I'm like, whatever. So um, it's like he's he's very much the old Hollywood manager. Like he um, it, he's old and he just hustles, man. And back in the day, he was working it all the time. And now he's very technologically like inept. He doesn't understand how everything really works anymore. And he 100% doesn't do his research. So when he first started representing me, he'd be like, "Oh, you got to come to this party," and he was taking me to all these parties, sending me everywhere. I mean, like, like like the typical Hollywood parties that you would think of, you know, with all the stars and, you know, the Stallones are there and it's just like, it, you know, there's some big ass mansion in the Hollywood Hills and stuff. And it's just, it's so weird, but he would always invite me to these parties. And I was working as a cocktail waitress also for many years. So I'm like, I'd be like getting off work and I'm in my cocktail stuff. And it's like last minute, you want to come to this party? And I'd be like, well, I don't have anything to wear. And he's like, oh, it's fine. Just wear whatever you know you wore to work. So I'd come in this like little cocktail dress from a nightclub and oh, like hey it's a black tie party. And I'm just <laughs> like, oh my God, Marv, this is not casual. <laughs> but I mean, it, he'd be like, you know, you, I have uh, a director and producer of this movie that, you know, they have a role for you. And I'd meet them and I'm like, they 100% direct porn. Like, this is not... <laughs> <laughs> like, this is not like this is not what you think, <laughs> Marv. And he'd be like, no, 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 no. It's like it's a sci-fi movie. And I look them up, and I'm like, Marv, it's softcore porn. What they direct, like this is just their transition film. <laughs> like it's just, <laughs> I'm just like, no, no, no. You know, they're like in their Hawaiian shirt with gold chain and the chest hair popping up. And <laughs> like, I ca I can't. <laughs> but yeah, I've been like. I have all, I have the horror stories of the, you know, the Me Too shit and everything. And, you know, I've, I've just gotten really tired of it, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's not, it's really hard, I think, for people who, um, like actors who uh, see themselves as artists and try to maintain the integrity of their own art and work in the industry because it is such a like people do expect you to say yes to everything and they assume like oh you want to be famous so why wouldn't you do this and um you know it's it's just uh it's super dehumanizing actually the industry so it's definitely not the glamour <laughs> <laughs> and sunshine that uh is portrayed uh usually i think but um yeah it's really it's a weird world man and i'm always kind of like oh should i like trying to kind of step out of it a little bit you know and yeah. keep a foot in just for um like projects that i'm very passionate about and you know working with friends and uh fellow artists that i really respect and admire but yeah I, but so I'm always like teetering, like maybe I should do something else. I don't know. It's just, but then I always come back to it because essentially what I love most about it is that you, you do get to like explore the world. And I'm the kind of person where, um, like I love acting because I do have this sense of urgency about the world where I want to know everything about it and, and explore it. And that's what you do in acting, right? You, you like, get all these different roles and you enter these different worlds and it's your job to research that 
and that's what I love about it. So I'm just like, uh, but, and I'm so easily convinced to do something else. You know, I'll spend a day in a doctor's office. And I'm like, I think I want to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I like met a private investigator one time and I was like, I think this is the job for me. <laughs> oh my gosh. I so have that too. If I watch a documentary by the end, I'm like, I think I could do yeah. that. <laughs> I literally watched like some documentary about a pandemic and I was like, I think I want to be the person that like organizes the emergency team when a pandemic happens. (laughs) (laughs) And then you watch Tiger King and you're like, tigers, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Meth, yes. (laughs) Tigers, (laughs) yes. Let's do it. (laughs) I've definitely Uh, noticed um, a little bit touching on what you said i've i've noticed too like in music and i'm dipping my toes in comedy now and whatever i've gotten into there's always you know your core group of people who do it for the love and the art and then there's a demographic of people who want to make money off of those people and yeah. is i don't know i used to be really bitter about it but yeah. yeah now as i get older i'm like okay well how can i take advantage of them because they're trying to make money so for them to make money i need to make money so hmm. right yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's, uh, it's really, yeah, I used to be super bitter about all of it, you know, and now I'm just kind of like, eh, it is the way it is. And <laughs> yeah, no Mark, he directs porn. <laughs> I also just think too, that if you do in any kind of, uh, creative, uh, form, of work that you do. Like, I think that as long as you focus on doing good work and working with the right people, you will find your core group of people and you will attract the kind of people that you want, you know, and it might take longer. Um, but then, you know, as long as everybody's doing good work, that's going to, you know, you're going to get attention from that eventually. So I don't know. I just like the doing of it. I don't really care about the end product of it all. <laughs> like, I, to be honest, like I would rather shoot a film and then never see myself. <laughs> I just like doing it. And then afterwards I'm like, <laughs> great. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> so you, you talked about how you like a learning and exploring and you want to know everything and that's part of acting so you get a role so you get a role whatever it is do you have certain steps you take to start becoming that person or what's your first step after reading the script and you're like okay i'm playing Susie sue what's step one (laughs) after that (laughs) yeah so i um i typically will read the script um i'll read it once just like not really thinking about my character but just reading it for the overall story and then I will um then read it over and over and over again uh probably I would say probably five to ten times and I'm you know the more you memorize the easier it becomes to memorize your lines so it it usually I have my lines memorized by then but just I want a, such an understanding of the script itself and the story itself that I can then, um, I obsess over <laughs> the character <laughs> because really it's you, right? Like you're trying to find like some, like a part of yourself that you already have that you can almost exploit for the character. Mm. Um, so everything that I do from then on out, even though I look like I'm just living my daily life, I'm really thinking about like this character and how they would feel about even just ordering a hamburger or something, you know, and then, but I'm also researching. So, uh, especially if it's a super, um, sometimes like for my last film I did, I had to have a seizure (laughs) and I, you know, I'm like, I have to have a realistic seizure and I don't, know what that looks like I don't know what that is and there was also it it was based the story was based on the Jonestown massacre so super uplifting story (laughs) (laughs) mass suicide uh by cyanide so I'm essentially like having a seizure dying of like cyanide poisoning uh so I was like researching the Jonestown massacre for weeks 
and just listening to the tapes, which is like, you'll never forget that, right? Like that's, yeah. that's a traumatizing <laughs> thing to listen to. But I just, just researching everything, researching cults, um, firsthand accounts from cults. I listen like, even when I'm in the car commuting to work, I'm listening to a podcast about something to do with the script. Um, or I'm listening to, um, someone's account of being a part of the cult, you know, and, um, yeah, it's, it's just, it consumes my life from the minute that I get the script and I get the role. Even if I don't get the role, honestly, it will consume my life <laughs> until, like, because especially if I really like, you know, the role and I don't get it, I'm still going to like obsessively think about it as if I had the role. Um, but yeah, it, I just, I just do so much research and so much homework and I'll read and I'll reread the script kind of in between all of that research up until the day the first day of filming that by the time I get there, I don't have to think about anything. Yeah. Like I can just, because I think like that's the hardest part, right? Is just kind of trusting that you've done the work and letting it come through. So um, I just, I'm so, I'm such a, a perfectionist about my own work and I'm so paranoid about not being good enough <laughs> that I, I just overwork myself because I don't want to let anyone down, but like, I don't want to let myself down. Right. <laughs> Most importantly on set. Yeah. Cause I might like, the thing is with me is I might not be, I always say this, I might not be the best actor, but I will always be the most reliable one. So I like the majority of the roles I've, gotten have not been because I got it from the audition but because their actress dropped out and I'm either second third or fourth choice and then they're always but they're usually happy with what I've done you know because I yeah step up to the occasion so I just I always want to make sure that I'm reliable I've done my homework and I and they'll call me again you know yeah well hey you yeah. know that Harrison Ford wasn't in line to be Han Solo he was just they're reading. He was, he was the other person doing the readings. And so get out. Really? Didn't I didn't know that. Know that. So, I know. Because he was already in American graffiti and um, George Lucas didn't want to use anyone really who was already known. Yeah. Um, so he was the person across the table doing the readings with people auditioning or coming in or whatever. And he wanted to play Han Solo. So he just lobbied for it. And since he was always there, he got it. <laughs> That's amazing. And then, yeah. That's awesome. Now you can't imagine anyone else as Han Solo, so. No. <laughs> That's awesome. What role, um, what role that you've had would you say is your most challenging so far? Is because it seems like you really do the work. So has there been any where it was like a lot on you or you just maybe couldn't quite figure out how to get in that character's head or I don't know? Um, you know, I think that the first, I've had, I've had a lot of challenging roles, not because, um, I've had a hard time getting in the character's head, but because, um, I, like I've worked with a lot of, uh, directors who are, you know, it's either like film school, a lot of amateur directors who haven't quite figured out the language yet how to communicate with actors and they're you know tend to be a little overbearing and um then you kind of lose the freedom of acting <laughs> like you know there's a difference between a director who will get a good performance because they just kind of maybe say something and then let you go and a director who's like no no, no why'd you pick up the coffee cup that way <laughs> it's like, you want a good performance or you want me to pick up the coffee cup a certain way like I don't like it's just it's like well because I'm right-handed you know, so <laughs> <laughs> like super nitpicky about everything and look I'm super nitpicky about continuity because um I have worked with so many amateur directors who don't have like a scripty or who you know like there like there are a lot of jobs missing so you have to wear a lot of hats as an actor yeah and I don't want the edit to be messed up so I'm thinking about that but but there but some directors are so nitpicky that it gets to the point where I'm just like completely lost 
<laughs> it's hard to hold on to uh, what you're trying to work on character wise and emotionally while you know you're like we gotta like move a certain <laughs> way into this thing you know <laughs> it's just like so I don't know the first feature I did was really uh I I I didn't love, like, I, I liked the story of the script, the script, but I didn't, like, love it. Um, <laughs> but it was a perfect first feature for me to do because there wasn't a lot of money writing on it. Uh, there's never a lot of money writing on anything I do, so <laughs> <laughs> that's not saying much, but um, there was just no pressure, right? Like, yeah. I, it was just the perfect, like, opportunity to just kind of figure out, like, what a feature film entailed as a lead and like how much time and energy would go into that and it's totally a different ball game but um it was that i think was one of the hardest roles for me because i had a really hard time with my relationships in the film with my best friends <laughs> you know like one of them i just didn't really like at all <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> like just you know in general and then you know the dialogue it's like I love the director he wrote it he's so super super sweet guy but uh you know he's a young white male writing a female story and sometimes the justification of a female's relationship with his, her best friend is like we're the best bitches ever and there's nothing <laughs> there you know like there's nothing supporting that you know, there's not, there's not really deeper dialogue going on. It's just kind of very there. So that was really hard for me to kind of try to <laughs> fake this relationship and justify all of the dialogue. Um, I don't know. It's, there's a challenge to every role, though. The only role that I su surprisingly didn't have never had a challenge with was uh, the last feature, the last feature I did with the, like, cult and <laughs> oh. suicide just because like every like every like that was the first film one of the first films where I had a big part in it where it was like everyone had their shit together everyone was good like n every single person on that set was an artist like, like from the the DP to the director to every actor to the makeup artist like everyone was an artist and everyone was just so good so it was just like so easy to be in that world every day um and everything was so well written but yeah there have been uh sorry flies are buzzing around me because I'm on a farm <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah I think I don't know literally like every film that I've done uh in the beginning was super hard because it was always just like a really bad short <laughs> i was just like trying to do really good work while everybody else was like oh what do we shoot next <laughs> <laughs> just so funny oh well speaking yeah. of people not knowing what to do we've actually <laughs> shared the stage once upon a time yes you, the perils of Lulu. Oh my goodness! I'm so glad you remembered what it was called. I was I was gonna sit here and name it, but like, that nah, she won't remember what it's called. Ever. No, that was my first play ever. Mine too. Also, my only one. But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Was there anything from that first play experience that maybe planted a seed or? Or, or I don't know, maybe you're like, either I want to do this or I don't want to do it like that. Or... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, you know what I think it was? I was such a shy... So that year also, um, I actually had just moved there. I had just moved to Orange County from Austin, Texas. Yes, I remember you... That semester. You were, so... su you were such a Texas girl. I think you still had an accent at that point. <laughs> Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, so my mom uh, was actually a casting director in the industry years and years ago, and then uh, quit when I was five and moved us to Austin, Texas, um, for a more you know substantial childhood, <laughs> <laughs> rather than in LA. <laughs> so, um, 
it's, but I kind of, I wanted, I remember my freshman year of high school, I said to my mom, I was like, you know, I kind of want to try acting. And she was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be a no. <laughs> so, um, but I was so shy. I was always so shy. Like I was known for being very, very quiet to the point where my teachers would have like private meetings with my parents and be like, she needs to like <laughs> speak in class, you know, <laughs> which is hilarious because I was super loud at home. But, um, but I just really, I, there was this part of myself that wasn't shy, um, that I really wanted to explore and you know my mom was going oh, and, and then when we moved I was a late registrate I was late in registering for classes so there were only two options for my electives and one was culinary arts and the other was drama <laughs> <laughs> and I was sitting there with my mom and I was like <laughs> <laughs> guess what I'm taking so that play was the first time I was able to be like yeah I can do this like I'm I I can uh, kind of leap over that hurdle of shyness in front of people and just get the job done. So it was, it was like, it was the first time I was like, yeah, I can do it. Cool. Like, and then no doubt in my mind that I could do it. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's awesome. I, I feel like, I think I knew you were shy at one point, but I don't really remember that part of you at all. <laughs> I, I think, I think I befriended you like, pretty yeah. early on in that class so I, yeah. I don't remember you being shy <laughs> that's so funny yeah <laughs> no when I moved to California I really like I just you know it was a weird age so I was 15 so it, it you know I just kind of used it as an opportunity to reinvent myself in a way you know so I kind of dropped like any kind of reputation I had any stigma no one knew me <laughs> it's just like all right here we go <laughs> Is uh, reinventing yourself, it, it, I imagine that's something you kind of have to do, at least on a small scale with, with every project, is how does, how does one go about that? I, you know what, is, it kind of comes naturally to me. Like, it's, it's almost a problem in my life. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I don't think I go an entire year without some point in that year being like, you know what? I think I'm going to go to school and I'm going to study some science, you know, like, like, and I don't half-ass anything either. Like if I'm going to uh, like reinvent myself and decide to explore another part of the world and myself, I am, which I a hundred percent believe that uh, learning something new having to do with your intellect. Like I never thought that I was a science and math person until someone uh, told me one time and he's a, <laughs> he's an engineer at SpaceX, so he's just kind of smart. But I said, like, oh, I'm not good at math. And he was like, no, 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 one, no one's bad at anything. It's just a matter of what you make your priority. And I was, and it, like, completely changed my perspective on everything. And so from now, then on, I just approached everything like, oh, I can take math and I can be good at it. I just have to try, <laughs> you know, like, and, and now that I'm older to all these things that I thought were boring or like, weren't going to affect my life, I see their practical uses in the world. And so when I am learning math and I am, you know, studying science and stuff, it's like, oh, like, I, I, I understand what this applies to in the real world and like what jobs these apply to. And I, and I enjoy that I get to know that information so I'm constantly like trying like like I really I so I started studying environmental science a couple years ago and I like really dove head first into that <laughs> but then like I'll and I'll kind of keep these things right that I these like moments in my life where I reinvent myself whether it's for a character or just for my own personal amusement <laughs> Um, I'll keep them with me, you know, I'll keep like reading books on, you know, the things that I've studied and I'll keep, you know, kind of being interested in those things. So I never like reinvent myself and then let it go and like create a new person. Right. I like to think of it as like every time I'm researching something new for a role 
and or researching something new just because I'm interested in it. Like I'm just adding on to myself. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never bored. <laughs> well, there you go. I, I don't want to uh, keep you much longer, but this has been really fun. So thank you. <laughs> Oh. oh, I'm so excited to converse with someone other than my boyfriend who I love, but you know, <laughs> no, no, I, know I, I was thinking about it on the way here. I was like, this is the perfect time to try this. Cause everyone just wants to do something. <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> All right. So it, say five years in the future, where do you see Annie Newton of five years from now? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no clue. I, you know, I really, I have no, I, I have no fucking clue where I will be five years from now. And, but I'm okay with, you know, not knowing. I'm just kind of, I, I hope that I can continue uh, acting <laughs> and uh, working with, you know, the people that I really enjoy working with. Um, but I, uh, I really don't know. I can't even answer that question. <laughs> Heard it here fo first, folks. <laughs> so say you get to a point where, um, money is never an issue. You have everything you need and then some. Um, yeah. What, what are you doing with your life and your resources if you don't have to worry about a thing? Um, I would definitely be investing. So I would certainly be um, investing, you know, some of my time into uh, making art, whether that be film or I also love to paint and um, create anything. I just have to be creating something. <laughs> um, but certainly would love to be investing my time in film. Uh, but definitely investing a lot of my time in like sustainable development. Um, I'm super, <laughs> su especially if I didn't have to worry about money and I could even like invest some money into uh, helping our world kind of move forward. <laughs> so yeah yeah that's where i would love to be right on yeah okay say yeah. say you're you know maybe at your premiere someday you're on that <laughs> red carpet and somehow this little girl gets on the red carpet she comes up to you and she goes annie you're my favorite actress i i, I loved your work in the cult movie <laughs> and i i just want to grow up and be an actress what advice would you give that little girl <laughs> Um, I would tell her to do it. And I think that she in the future would definitely be entering in a different era than I entered. in. so I think it would be a little safer for her, uh, hopefully, <laughs> but, yeah. um, I would tell her to do it and to not compromise herself in any way. Hell yeah. At all. Yeah. All right, that is, that almost brought me to tears. <laughs> I, last thing, I want to try a game. I'm going to try with some other guests, but you're the first contestant. It's really oh, good. You, it's, it's called the ricochet round, and I just give you a short question, and you give me the first answer that bounces off of your brain, right? All right, all right. Okay. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Yes. Correct. <laughs> you can only listen to one album for the rest of your life. What is it? Oh, uh, Johnny Cash. Anything. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> the power to be invisible or the power to fly? Invisible. Correct. <laughs> Pepsi or Coke? Coke. Correct. Last question. What caused the War of 1812? Oh, fuck. I don't know, but I know it's conceived to Tchaikovsky's Overture of 1812, so <laughs> I wow. should know that. <laughs> wow. 
<sighs> we were looking for a series of economic sanctions taken by the British and French against the U.S. as part of the Napoleonic Wars and American outrage over the British. Um, I can't read that. Oh, impress, impressment, blah, 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 especially after the Chesapeake incident of 1807. But I like your answer better, so we're going to give it to you. Oh, right. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Is there anything, um, you know, for my dozens of people who will hopefully see this all the way to the end, is there anything you want to plug or promote? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that um, there are some projects. I mean, okay, my first feature is supposed to get distribution soon. 12 Days of Christmas, very crude humor in there. So if you're into that kind of thing, um, <laughs> very college age humor in that film. So 12 Days of Christmas on whatever platforms it gets onto. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so good at this. <laughs> well, maybe we can have you on uh, again when that does get released. Probably around Christmas time, I would imagine. I would hope, unless people get bored in quarantine and want Christmas now. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's get it out people yeah <laughs> all right Annie, well thank you very much this was a pleasure i think you um, are my most delightful guest so far so oh well golden star for I'm you i'm so happy that you asked me to be on <laughs> thank you that makes me feel really important i was just i was just like hoping my brain wouldn't leave me in the middle of it <laughs> <laughs> well if it did oh, that would probably make for some entertaining content so it's all oh, good. super entertaining yeah absolutely <laughs> It was so good to see you, Josh. You too. Oh, well, yeah. Keep killing the game. Um, I'll be oh. you know, rooting you on from afar as always. And um, yeah, take care of those horses out there. Oh, I will. Thank you. <laughs> you take care too. Right. Bye, Annie. Bye.